This tutorial is all about complete and incomplete combustion. This picture here shows uh, two Bunsen flames. This Bunsen flame on the left is often called the blue flame. Uh, this one on the right is often called the yellow or safety flame. And there's a difference between the two. If you hold a piece of pot over the yellow flame, then what we get here is uh, soot that forms onto the pot. But if you hold a piece of pot over the blue flame, then you get no such soot. So the blue uh, flame, the yellow flame, is producing soot. In the blue flame there is complete combustion, which means that the methane fuel is burning with plenty of oxygen from the air to make carbon dioxide and water vapour. But in the yellow flame there's incomplete combustion. There is insufficient air or oxygen mixing with the methane gas when it burns and that means that there is uh, some carbon monoxide formed which is a poisonous toxic gas and also some unburnt carbon forms in the form of soot. You need to be able to construct word equations for complete combustion and incomplete combustion of fuels and also to be able at higher level to balance symbol equations for those kinds of reactions. You need also to be able to explain the advantages of complete combustion over incomplete combustion of fuels. This summarises the two Bunsen burner flames. The yellow flame has got the air hole closed which means that uh, no air mixes with the gas before it uh, comes out of the chimney. Uh, whereas the blue flame has got the air hole open, there's plenty of air able to mix with the methane gas before it's uh, ignited at the top of the chimney. So the effect on the pot is that yellow one leaves soot or carbon, whereas the blue one has no soot because there's complete combustion. And one of the issues is the yellow flame is a less hot flame uh, and therefore the blue flame is the one that we tend to use for heating. Products of burning for the blue flame will be carbon dioxide and water vapour whereas for the yellow flame there will also be some carbon monoxide and some unburnt carbon. And so we can say that the blue flame has complete combustion whereas the yellow flame has incomplete combustion. So in complete combustion, the products are always carbon dioxide and water. So here, propane plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water. Now, if you were asked to give the symbol equation for this, you'd be likely to be given the formula for the propane, which is C3H8. You're expected to know the formula for oxygen, which is O2. You're also expected to know the formulas for carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and of water, which is H2O. You also need to be able to balance this equation, which means having the same number of each type of atom on each side of the equation. Now, on the left side of the equation, we can see there are three carbons, but presently there is only one carbon on the right. So we need to put a number three in front of the carbon dioxide to show there's three carbons made. Similarly, there's eight hydrogens on the left-hand side, but only two on the right-hand side. So here we need to put a number four in front of the H2O to show that there are eight hydrogens used up. That means that on the left-hand side, we've got three lots of two, which is six oxygens, and four lots of one, which is four oxygens here, which makes a total of 10 oxygens on the right-hand side. Now, as they come in pairs on the left-hand side, oxygen molecules have got two atoms in. That means we need five pairs or five oxygen molecules to balance it. In the second case, methane plus oxygen, again, gives carbon dioxide and water because it's complete combustion. Now, you will probably be expected to know the formula for methane and the formula for methane is CH4. So let's write CH4 here and again we're expected to know the formula of oxygen which is O2, carbon dioxide CO2 and water or water vapour is H2O. 
Now what we've got here then is one carbon on the left hand side and we've also got one carbon on the right hand side so that one already balances. On the left hand side we've got four hydrogens but we've only got two hydrogens on the right hand side. That means that we need to put a number two in front of that to show that there are four hydrogens on the right hand side. Then we count up the number of oxygens on each side. On the right hand side now we've got uh, here in the carbon dioxide just two oxygens and here two lots of one making two oxygens here making a total of four. So we need to make sure we've got four oxygens on the left hand side which means we need two oxygen molecules. Those equations are now both balanced. In incomplete combustion you'll be told either that the fuel is burning with insufficient oxygen to make carbon monoxide and water as products or you may be told it's making just carbon and water as products. Now in the first case if we're asked to write a symbol equation for this one then the propane the formula will probably be given to us it will be C3H8. The oxygen is O2 and we're expected to know that carbon monoxide is CO and water is H2O. So when it comes to balancing this one we've got three carbons on the left and again only one on the right so we need to enter on the left hand side a number three to show there's three carbons on both sides. Similarly, we've got eight hydrogens on the left and only two on the right. So in order to balance that, we need to put a number four in front of the H2O to show that there's eight hydrogens. Now, when we count up the number of oxygens on the right-hand side, there's three single ones here and four single ones here, which makes a total of seven. That means that we're going to need only three and a half oxygen molecules on the left hand side. Now although you can't strictly have half a ox oxygen molecule, um, it is accepted by the exam board. The alternative of course would be to double everything. So in other words to have two propanes, seven oxygen molecules, six carbon monoxides and eight water molecules. In the second case, you'd be given the formula of the pentane as being C5H12. You'd be expected to know that oxygen was O2, that carbon monoxide was CO, and that water was H2O. When we come to balance this one, we see there are five carbons on the left and only one on the right. So we're going to have to enter a number in the right, a number five in front of the CO, to make sure there are five carbons on each side. There's 12 hydrogens on the left, but only two on the right. So again, we're going to have to enter a number which is six. So there's six pairs of hydrogens on the right-hand side. Then when we count up the number of oxygens, we've got five single oxygens there and six single oxygens there, which means there's a total of 11. And that means that there's going to be five and a half oxygen molecules. Of course again if we were a purist and didn't want halves in the equation we could double everything and have two of these, eleven of these, ten of these and twelve of these. In the final example we're likely to be given the formula for butane which is C4H10 but we'd be expected to know that oxygen was O2 and here we're already making carbon which is C and H2O which is water. Now there are some advantages of complete combustion. For example, there's less soot made which means it's a cleaner flame and it means that for at home in with a gas fire or whatever we've got at home that we wouldn't have to sweep the chimney or the flue. Uh, more heat is released if there's complete combustion which means you make better use of your fuel and you don't get any car carbon monoxide produced and as carbon monoxide is poisonous or toxic it's a good thing if we don't get that. 
Carbon monoxide is extremely poisonous and if it enters your home and doesn't escape because of a faulty um, boiler or heater, it can cause death. And this news report was from 2006 where there were the deaths of two UK children in a hotel in Corfu caused by a badly maintained heater in their bedroom. You may also have seen stories in newspapers over the summer of various families who have either had children who died or were badly poisoned by carbon monoxide from putting barbecues into the tent to keep the children warm at night. This is very, very dangerous because when barbecue charcoal burns, it burns with incomplete combustion, making carbon monoxide. And that carbon monoxide would collect in the tent and build up over time until it became a toxic level. Finally, this is a past exam question. It says, one of the hydrocarbons in camping gas is propane, C3H8. Propane burns in a plentiful supply of oxygen, O2. Carbon dioxide and water are formed. Write a balanced, simple equation for this reaction. So, well, most of the information is given to us in the question. They've given us the formula of the propane, which is C3H8. And they've given us the formula of the oxygen, which is rather generous. They haven't given us the formula of carbon dioxide and water because we're expected to know those, CO2 and H2O. If you got that far and had the right formulas on the right side of the equation, that would get you one mark. But to get the second mark, we need to balance the equation properly. So we see that there are three carbons on the left hand side and only one on the right hand side so we need to enter a three in front of the CO2 and because there are eight hydrogens on the left and only two on the right we need to enter a four in front of the H2O then we look at the number of oxygens on the right hand side where we've got three pairs here which is six oxygens and four singles making a total of ten oxygens which means that we need to have 10 oxygens on the left-hand side. As they come in pairs, that's 5O2. A balanced equation like that would get us the full two marks.